God has been good to us on tonight. Yeah. Yeah. On tonight, we have a great lesson. We're going to be teaching them about what Jesus is telling his disciples on tonight. Again, in Matthew 5, verses 1 through 14. And Matthew 5, verses 1 through 14. And we use as our uh, subject tonight, blessed. Just the word blessed. Amen. Blessed means to be set aside or be made holy or consecrated or to do God's work or have God's blessing upon your life. Uh, the biblical uh, definition of, of blessed, blessed, a favor or gift by God, mm -hmm. thereby bringing happiness, the invoking of God's favor upon a person. The son was denied his father's blessing meaning of the word blessing. And when we use blessing, we use that as a sentence. And then it says, um, this is driving the believer as being uh, in invaluable position for receiving God's position, uh, uh, provision, being an extension of his grace. So we, we know that blessed, when we say we're blessed, we're blessed, yeah. meaning that it's a state of mind. Uh, you have, have you ever thought about it? That's what we're going to be teaching about tonight. Uh, being blessed don't mean everything is right. It don't mean that everything is going good in life. It's a state of mind, a state of being. When God has put his grace or his, his anointing upon your life, you are blessed to go through whatever it is that we have to go through. You know, so many times we get confused by the, the wrong doctrine. We get confused by folks that don't really understand what Christianity is. They think once they step over into the church or step over into Christianity and accept Christ as their Lord and their Savior, then everything's supposed to be riding on cloud nine. Mm -hmm. uh, we're supposed to be walking on the street, paid we go. Mm -hmm. uh, we kings and we queens. <laughs> everything is to our begging. Everything is right here the way we want it and the way we way we think it's supposed to be. But we don't got old enough to know that. Right? Um, Amen. It ain't like that. Amen. That's right. The blessed one had to go through something. You're right. Amen. When you're blessed of the Lord and you have a daughter upon his life, the devil will take you through Amen. some stuff. Amen. He will try you. The Bible says he, he shoots fire and dots at you. I try to bring it down. He tempts you. He do all kinds of stuff to you just because, just because you say you're blessed. Oh, God has blessed you. See, the devil see God's hand on your life. Well, I'm going to be the first to tell you if you ain't really noticed. If ain't that bad happening, you ain't right. <laughs> if all good stuff happened to you your whole life, and nothing bad ever happened, you ain't going nowhere. You've been deceived. Because my Bible tells me and shows me something different. The children of Israel were blessed of the Lord. God's chosen folk. Every now and then, even when they, they done messed up, something happened. Something happened because they were sold into slavery. Portia of them died. God kept a rat. And the same thing happened over in the New Testament. All the disciples had to go through some gruesome death. Uh, some of them had their eyes put out. Some of them re requested to be hung upside down when they were killed. Yeah. Others were thrown from top of, top of the building. Yeah. Yeah. Some were stoned. Some had their heads cut off. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I always think about, you know, John the Baptist had did nothing but preach. Right. Right. Preach that the Lord was coming. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all he did. Because somebody didn't like the way he looked. He looked blessed. Just didn't like the way he looked. They had a head cut off. Amen. So we have to understand tonight. I want to do away with that, that thing of, 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 of thinking that everything is going to be right in your life. That's what, that's what kills your faith when something bad happens. All right. Huh? We serve a God that looks low. He's, he's high and he looks low. Your life has to be in his plan. Sometimes things happen to you because it's not in his plan to happen the other way. 
He sees things the way we can't see. He knows things and he governs things that happen in life for other folks' lives. We look at God and we think that he's a God, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a fictitious God that somebody has sold to you, somebody has, has placed in your thought pattern that he, he, he's going to always prevent something from happening. My Bible don't tell me. He don't tell me. Old man Jonah was, was told to go to Nineveh to preach. Jonah said, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. They threw him overboard. Off they cast a little light. They threw him overboard. The fish came and ate him up, spit him out on dry land. <laughs> All because he had the blessing of, of God's blessing upon his life. But he refused. He was hard-headed at that point. But look at what he had to go through. Uh, just for being a prophet. Abraham. Just for being a prophet. Ezekiel, just for being a prophet. Isaiah, just for being a prophet. We have to understand that just because something is bad happening, it has nothing to do totally with your salvation or how you are living. It's just because God's anointing is on your life. When things are looking the worst, you are the best place in your life. God, and that's what we're going to learn tonight. Because Jesus had to give his disciples some, some baffling words here on tonight. And I've heard over the years, many preachers have taught this and preached this, and some use it as the Beatitudes, and some use it as something else. But I, I, I want to point your attention uh, to, this, to this fact that I wrote down here. Uh, before we get into our lesson, who is a blessed person? From a biblical point of view, a blessed person is the first and foremost a man or woman who is in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, who no longer submits to this world, but submits to the word. That's what a blessed person is. Yeah. Have you ever thought about it? How many times? Have you met someone? They said, I used to say, how you doing? Maybe know some things that done happen to them in their life, and you, you begin to scratch your head. <laughs> because they're pronouncing something that may not be in the present realm, but they're pronouncing because they, they have the God of salvation on their side. And so we are always blessed. And high, you can be going to jail. I'm blessed and highly favored. Because we got a God on, we got a God on now. Come on, y'all. Y'all yeah. got a God on y'all side? Y'all yeah. got Jesus on y'all side? Yeah. Holy Spirit on the inside? Mm -hmm. You are blessed and highly favored. God has a purpose for your life. And he's, he's always ushering in things into your life that you can be blessed and highly favored. See, it's a, it's a way of thinking about it to where... We don't get depressed over what we see. Uh, it's, 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 it, it, all of us are susceptible to that at one time or another. Mm -hmm. Today, mm -hmm. when you really think about certain things that's happening, you get depressed. If it ain't nothing, but you don't got old. Yeah. <laughs> well. You wish you were 20 years young. <laughs> now, let alone something happened to the car, something happened at the house, something happened to the children. Some happen on the job. Put all that stuff aside. Something is happening every day of our lives to make us think about and to make us feel down. Uh -huh. And so Jesus is talking to his disciples here. He says in, in, in Matthew 5, I'm almost finished. Maybe God trying to tell you something. Yeah. You just ain't listening. 
Somebody said he'll tell you, he may be, but you just ain't listening sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so we got to go through some things in life sometimes. But we still bless yeah. and have your faith yeah. because God is chasing you. Yeah. Uh, think about it. Well, the wrong that we do in our lives, he still chastised us. If he if he chastised us, it's just like it was when I was a little boy and I did something. Mama said, go outside and get me a switch. Huh? I would go outside and I'd find the smallest switch it was. <laughs> she would go outside and get two more and tie it together. <laughs> then she'd chase me around the house. Because she was mom. And she loved it. I didn't act up when I don't did something wrong and made mad. But God does the same thing. He chases us. Do you not realize that God is, if God ain't chasing us, uh, is not chasing you, then you're not in the right place. The right state of mind. Yeah. You're not right in your rightful spirituality of where God wants you to be. If He's not chasing you, yeah. then something is wrong. Yeah. Something has blocked you from Him. So you're in a rightful relationship. In a relationship, we hurt each other, right? Mm -hmm. Let me see my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then, we're going to say something wrong, right? Yeah. Every now and then, we're going to do something wrong, right? Yeah. In a relationship, so we're in a relationship with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, right? He died for us. He paid the penalty for us. Now we belong to him. We are in a relationship with our Lord and Savior. What seals that relationship is his Holy Spirit Amen. that's dwelling on the inside. What seals the Holy Spirit, released the Holy Spirit was the blood of Jesus when he died. And so if we're in the right relationship, we're not going to always see eye to eye, but we're going to love one another. Amen. But we got to realize that he's, he's bigger than we is. <laughs> and then he said, he began to teach them. This word blessed. The, the, the third verse it says, blessed are the poor in spirit. For there is the kingdom of heaven. Have you ever had a time, a season in your life, to where you just start crying on the why? Just sad, just woke up sad. Somebody says it's chemical imbalance, or it might be something else. But you just, you were just sad and didn't know why you were sad, right. but you just had to have a good cry and you got out right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Sometimes things happen to us in life that nobody else knows about. Sometimes things happen to us and it causes us to be poor in spirit. We're not at the place that we need to be at in our spirit, in the spirit realm. We're not in the place to even receive the blessing of God. He said, blessed are the pure in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. He's reassuring them that what he's doing, what Jesus is actually doing here is prophesying to his disciples. But they can't see it. They can't hear it. Because they, they stuck on the words that he's saying. They actually haven't broken it down. And that's what happens in Bible study and why you, you hear different preachers preach. We actually don't sit and really think about what the preacher or minister or Sunday school teacher or, 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 or someone that's breaking down the word of God to you. We actually don't take the time to really, because we get stuck on their words and we get in our emotion. We just like, oh. Yeah, free. Yeah, hallelujah. Praise God. But we really ain't paying attention to what they are saying. And we need to pay attention because sometimes they prophesy to us. We don't even know. Uh, sometimes God is talking to us through the word and we don't even know. Because we, we don't let our emotions run away. That's a time to shout, to dance, to, to, to say hallelujah. There's a time to sit there and be quiet and listen. Amen. When the Spirit of God is talking. <laughs> when we say a prayer, do you not know a prayer is two lines going? Is your line going to heaven? And God's line coming back down to you? But we run that one line. Huh? We, we don't have a part of line. We run one line to heaven. That's it. All we want him to know is what's wrong and what we want. But when he come back, it might be a no on the other end. We don't want to hear that part, so we go to shout and we go to run. A 
He's going to do whatever it is. So we bless and highly favor. But sometimes we need to sit down and just be quiet and listen to the Lord. Got to find that place and listen to him. So Jesus told him, said, said, said blessed are the pure in spirit. He let him know sometimes you're going to be poor in spirit. But know that the kingdom of heaven is on your side. In other words. And then he says, blessed are they that what? Mourn. Huh? For they shall be what? Comfort. So it's a morning time because of the physical depths that we endure. And it's also a morning time because of the spiritual depth that we endure. And then there's also a morning time for the spiritual and the mental things that we endure. And we mourn for those losses. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, well, you don't need to be crying. You are blessed and highly favored. No, you need to sit down and really think about it. Go through your morning season. Because in your morning season, when you're, when you're there and you're poor in spirit and you're in mourning, God is going to meet you where you are. Amen. See, if you're running around talking about it ain't happening, I ain't claiming it, I ain't naming it, I ain't claiming it. It ain't happening. And that person laying in that car. You don't lost that car. You don't lost that, that husband or that wife. You don't lost that, that, that relationship you had with your job, your mom, man. You don't lost all of that. And you saying, I ain't gonna name it and claim it. <laughs> you better get in the morning and cry. There's nothing wrong with crying out to God. <laughs> see, we got to, we got to learn how to see the word in a different light. Jesus is prophesying to them and letting them know you getting ready. Y'all getting ready to go through something. You, you looking for me to work these miracles out. You looking for me to turn the water to wine and raise the dead and to feed 5,000, 4,000. You looking for all of these miracles. But you getting ready to go through something. And he's telling them that without telling them that. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of times on the jobs that I have worked, worked for, my bosses would always ask me, say, you you got a camera in our office. I said, why you sit there? He said, because you always want to step ahead. <laughs> I said, I ain't talking about, I don't have a camera in your office. Ain't nobody done told me that. It just come to me that way. He said, well, it might be funny to keep on coming to you. <laughs> but that's what God will do for you yeah. if you listen to him. When one person is talking, you reading, you reading in between their words what actually is going on. Yeah. Uh, you better have that and be paying attention to that and pay attention when the Holy Spirit gives you something. Not to go run and tell everybody about it, but to sit down and examine what he's actually saying to you. Through the word, through your spirit, huh, and through your physicalities of life when things start happening, you may have some mental issues, might, might gravitate and step back. You say, oh, no. Yeah, you might backslide. God will use whatever he needs to use as a tool to teach you something. Amen. To give you some wisdom and understanding to how to help others. If you ain't never been through that, never done nothing, how do you know how Amen. to help me? Amen. You can't help me if you ain't never been through that, never done anything. How can you help me? And so God will use different mechanisms. He might not tell you exactly what's going on in your life. He might not tell you exactly why you're feeling the way you're feeling. He might not even tell you. It may be in a situation to where you're in that morning situation to where he's slowing you down. He's slowing you down just a little bit so our paths can cross. So that our destinies can run periodically in a, in a line together for a short period. Because you have something that I need, and I have something that you need, and, and it requires us to come together. But if you run 100 and I'm running 50, I can't catch you. <laughs> and then he said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. If you got the wrong type of mindset to where everything is yours. Everybody else is beneath you. 
You have no need of God. Some people are their, their mental makeups are takers. And they want what you got, what they got, and what everybody else got. And they don't mind telling you that, and they don't mind doing whatever mischief or devilish stuff that they need to do to get it. Everybody that's hanging around you ain't me. They are not me. Somebody is in line to try to do something to you to get what you got. They are not me about it. They are not just doing it and, and being quiet about it and waiting on God's blessing. See, he, he's letting you know, if you be meek about your spirituality, then you shall inherit, the, what, what is it, inherit the earth, meaning that you're not, all of us are going to go back to the earth if he don't come back and wrap us up. So, so, but what he's saying here is, everything going to be provided for you. Amen. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat. You don't have to worry about uh, life or death. You don't have to worry about your clothes. You don't have to worry about your family. You shall inherit the earth. Meaning that things are going to come to you that you don't even know. You, 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 ever went, you ever went and looked at some old books and found money? Or looked at some old clothes and found, I've been in the washing machine. And found five or $10 in the washing machine. Everybody don't wash their clothes. Somehow I know the five or $10 in the washing machine. I'm trying to figure out why I was looking in there anyway. You got to be able to help somebody without wanting something back. Be meek about it. Slip and bless it. Don't tell nobody about it. Huh? Go pay a light bill, water bill, go pay rent, go, go do something for somebody. Go cut the grass. Don't tell nobody about it. Wait till they leave you. Go cut the grass and then when they come back, they look. Somebody cut my grass. Be meek about it. Don't go bolstering about it. See, see, this is what Jesus is trying to teach his disciples. See, this is a, this is a relationship thing that he has with his disciples. And, and I guarantee you, as they were sitting there, they were, they, they were missing. And then it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst of righteousness, for they shall be filled. Huh? The fervent Paul said, I think it was Paul in the one place said, the fervent prayer of the righteous man fell much. Huh? See, see, that don't mean that you're right all the time. But you are righteous in your spirit. Your prayer will develop much. When you thirst out for righteousness. Not, not to be seen. See, we're living in a time where uh, we use righteousness other words of, 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 that, are, that are such as, as something as uh, as clothes we put on and we take it off when we want to take it off but we, we want to be seen as righteous and, 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 and in order to be to be taken as righteous from God then you have to be righteous in your spirit he know when you ain't righteous in your spirit he know when you struggle with something when you're not he know when you when something has you and it's gonna take a little time for it for you to get untangled, uh -huh. then when he then then you just told it along and and, and join. Uh, he knows. Yeah. So he's telling his disciples, uh, you shall be filled. Now this last this 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 number seven. <laughs> this is a hard one right here. It says, Blessed are the merciful. For they shall, what? Anybody got any mercy out there? I need some. Seems like everybody, nobody have no mercy. Politicians ain't got no mercy. They put everybody else's stuff out there in a minute. Sweep it up, make it look like they want to make it look. On both, on all sides. Church folks do the same thing. There is no mercy. We in the church house, we glorify God. Somebody said that, I can't wait to get home. I can't wait. I can't wait. I just lent them some money the other day. And they up in here with that new suit on. Riding up in here in that new car, and they ain't gave me my money. I 
How you know if somebody ain't dressed them with the suit and gave them the coat? <laughs> well, how you know they didn't just get the raise on the job and went and got the car and had forgot about you if they owed you some money? You got to have some mercy. You don't have any mercy about yourself. You don't have no Christ about it. This is why Jesus is taking his time to talk to his disciples to let them know what they need in life because he wasn't going to always be there. If you show mercy towards your fellow man and your neighbor, uh -huh. then you receive mercy back. Huh? You show mercy, you receive mercy back. Amen. And then this one, uh, verse 8 says, this is another problem. Mm -hmm. This is another problem. It said, blessed are the pure in harm, mm -hmm. for they shall see God. See, we play so many, so many games, we trick ourselves. Amen. We've been in church so long, we think we saved. Amen. We were fooling folks for so long, 10 years, all of a sudden, we became preachers, we became teachers, we became singing in the choir. We don't fool ourselves, we don't even know God. Amen. I know I don't get too many amens on there. I see it all the time. Blessed are the pure in the heart. See, see, you got to have a pure heart when you serve the God. Oftentimes, I say, um, because people get hung up on this thing we call holiness and righteousness. Uh -huh. They get hung up to thinking that they are always right. Come on. The pure in heart know they ain't right. Amen. Uh, Amen. I get one thing fixed in my life with God showed me something. And it be something I don't want to get rid of. I don't want to keep it. He said, you got to let it go. I said, no, I don't want to keep it. I had an old truck one time. <laughs> I had several old trucks one time. <laughs> God told me to get rid of it. Place it in my spirit. Get rid of it. I would never get rid of it. I like it. It was a 69 Ford pickup truck. I like it. That thing stayed broke down more than it then it stayed running. But I didn't like the way it looked, the way it sounded. You know, you get it run around me, you know. <laughs> but I loved it. But I wouldn't get rid of it. I kept it for years. I switched it over and put another bed on and made it a welding truck. I didn't want to get rid of it. God said, get rid of it. I still keep it. I painted it. Put a utility bed on, put a welding machine and all that on. I still got it. Room, room, you know. Still got it. Then one day I got rid of it. And then I, I was thinking about it one day. I said, Phew. feel good that I had to work on that. <laughs> God had told me 10 years prior to get rid of it, but I didn't want to get rid of it. Huh? So because we get stuck and our hearts are not quite right, we don't want to, uh, uh, we don't want to acknowledge when we are not quite right and listening to the, to the Lord. See, 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 I would be disobedient because he spoke in my spirit to get rid of it. It was a money trap. But it didn't want to get rid of it. Same thing over the spiritual realm. There are some things in our lives, in each one of our lives, that we just don't want to get rid of. We like it. We hide it. We've been hiding for years. I'm guilty. It's certain things that we just don't want to get rid of. And we paint that picture that we appear at heart. See, I let it all hang out now. <laughs> God don't woke me down a little bit. I'm still doing some things, but he done woke me down now. <laughs> all right. Don't let me know we're getting close now. <laughs> so that's what we have to do in the spiritual realm. We may make sure that we pure. The only way you're going to be pure at heart is to begin to, to, to peel back some stuff. Let the Holy Spirit peel it back. Let it fall on the, on the ground, whatever it is. You don't got too old now to do it. Amen. I, I don't see nobody in here that do the break dance. Amen. Uh, you look like you break dancing, you just because you don't fail and you can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> so you might as well stop and just lay there a little while and say, hey, I need some help. <laughs> Just acknowledge I need some help to be pure. Be pure about it. Whatever it is. And then he said, oh, we just keep running into the heart. Blessed are peacemakers. Some of us don't want no peace. We can't be 
we fight with our own self. Right. We get mad all the time. Come on. Now that we we young, we were mad because we want old. Now we don't got old, now we mad because we ain't young. <laughs> Unpeaceable. Jesus is telling his disciples how to be blessed. Blessed are the peace, peacemakers, for they serve, for they, uh, for they shall be called the what? Children of God. You got somebody that's always honorary, somebody that's always starting something, somebody that's always in mischief and, and causing uh, uh, folks to fight and war against one another. There is no God. They're not no child of God. Child of God wouldn't do that. If you trapped into that, ask God to help you. Be pure about it. Be pure and hard about it. Ask God to help you. If you like that and your chemical makeup is such and you've been that way for 60, 70 years, it's time for you to change. Come on now. You're a child of God. It's time for you to change and stop causing this trouble. So much trouble in the church house. Your house, my house, on the job, in the street. So much trouble because some Christian somebody don't start with something and standing back watching mm -hmm. us fight. All right. All right. Yeah. Then he says, Blessed are they which curse which are persecuted for righteousness. See, see, some of us are talking about we 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 use persecution as somebody talking about it. if they right, just be quiet and get it right. Huh? They all not be talking about me. You always talk about me and this, that, just like little children. Get mad, stomp all, won't help nobody simply because somebody done said something about it and you hot about it, you won't man call about it. If they right. <laughs> if they right. Don't say nothing. Just get it right. But here, I want you to understand, it's that for righteousness. But you're doing the right thing they're talking about you, persecuting you, just as Paul was doing with the children, uh, with, with, with Christ and his believers. Uh, during that time, Saul was killing the, the righteous. They were doing what was right and being killed. They weren't being persecuted for, 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 for out there doing something wrong. They were doing the right thing. It says here that for righteousness' sake, there is the kingdom of heaven. You're being persecuted. Quit fighting. Let God fight the battle. Amen. Stop praying. And then it says here, the last one it says, Blessed are ye when men revile you. Mm -hmm. Huh? Men, they, they, they just talk about you all the time. They're doing stuff to you. They hate you. Huh? You're a bad smell and they know it. The, even if the, the mention of your name, do you not know that sometimes people might mention my name after a while and folks just get upset, just get mad, don't even know why. They might say Johnny White, Pastor White, Reverend White, and, and it makes their, their Blood just bold. <laughs> when I was out there in the world, the boys that come around me, they didn't like me and they wanted to fight, they wanted to do that, I didn't laugh at them. Uh, it won't stop with nothing. If you beat me today, I'm coming back tomorrow, but I'm still coming. <laughs> I was a little crazy like that. And so, don't worry about me. That revile you. And then it says, uh, and persecute you. And shall say all manner of evil against you. Against you now, now, now. You got to understand that he said, he said, falsely. See, see, we get upset when folks go tell the truth, right? <laughs> you got hung up out there and you're doing the wrong thing, and then I see it, then I go tell somebody else, you get mad at me because I told you. It was the truth. Ain't no need to get mad at the police man when he stopped you. I didn't do the same thing. He stopped me. I be speeding. He come up. You know how fast you going? Yeah, I know how fast I was going. <laughs> I had to catch myself sometimes, you know. What do you mean, ask me how fast I was going? You, I know you know too. <laughs> but 
But I had to think about it. Well, I got an attitude about it. I'm the one that's breaking the law. Think about it. Somebody say something to you in the church house, tell you, 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 you dress, uh, you, something wrong with your clothes or the way you look or, or something might be wrong somewhere and somebody approach you in a certain way and they tell you you get upset with them because you think they persecute you. If it's true, change. And then it says, and persecute you and, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. It's Jesus talking. Now you're going to hit him with something hard and I'm going to hit you with something hard and we're going to go home. He says rejoice and be exceedingly glad. And he don't told them how to be blessed. He don't told them who was going to be blessed. He don't prophesy to them in his blessings telling them what they're going to go through and how they're going to be have to look at life. But they can't see it because he's talking them real to them. And so they don't understand it. We see it, but they couldn't understand it because he often talked in parables that they didn't understand. So now he's hitting them with something who they are. He said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. You see that? He went from talking about the blessed, poor in the spirit, blessed are this and that, blessed are this and that. They think he's talking about somebody else. He's actually talking about them. Y'all think I'm teaching somebody else. I'm actually teaching y'all. It says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. When you go through things, you got a reward in heaven. Don't let that stuff hinder you from getting to heaven. Don't let that stuff block you from, from making your way to the kingdom of God. Don't let it stop you. I don't care even, even you persecuting yourself, doing the wrong stuff. You know it wrong, but you like it. Don't let it stop you. Ask the Lord to forgive you and keep it moving. Don't let the devil tell you, you know you're wrong, guy. And then you go to hide like Adam and Eve did. Go to hide. Why you go hide? You can't hide from God. <laughs> you can't hide from God. They out there hiding, putting on clothes and all this and that. God, like Adam, where you at, man? Well, I was hiding in the bushes. What you got on there? Well, I, I was naked. I know you were naked. I made you naked. We think you both can't see. God surely can see everything that's wrong with us. Huh? He know when your mind ain't right. Oh yeah. Huh? Yeah, he know. Come on, do I need to remind you about John? Do I need to remind you about David? Do I need to remind you about Elijah? Do I need to remind you about Jeremiah? I kept on crying for the folks. Do I need to remind you about Peter? Do I need to remind you about Down Thomas? Do I need to remind you about yourself? <laughs> we ain't always right. That, there's nobody in the Bible but Jesus that was right. Everybody else missed the boat. At one point of time in their life, they missed the boat. And some of them, like David, kept on missing. But a man out of God's own heart because he repented, got it right with God. He couldn't get it right with you rise. Think about it. He couldn't get it right with you rise. It'll have him killed. But God still used it. Amen. So that's for the people for the night is to understand that it ain't what you're doing. It's your mindset. It's your mindset tonight. You are blessed. Not because you live the righteous life, but because you're blessed, because God made you blessed. Amen. It won't not that you did, it was unmerited favor. It's unmerited favor that He put upon your life. You Amen. have the anointing of God upon your life, and you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and you have some gifts in your life. It wasn't because you worked for it and got it like that, it's because He gave it to you. Amen. Amen. Now, it's up to you what you do with it. But you bless. Amen. And then it says, For so prosecuted, persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Then he hit them with this. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savior, where will shall it be salt? It is therefore good for nothing to be 
cast down, to be cast out, and to be trodden under the foot of me. So many times we lose our tastings. We lose our spirituality. We don't feel like it no more. We lose our seed. We got to get it back. The only way to get it back, because see, heaven don't mean the way is your mindset. You, you allow to, and all of, us, all of us is guilty now. Every, every one of us in here is guilty of losing our spiritual mindsets. But that don't want to leave us from doing what God has required of us. Mind your Jonah again. He hated the people of them. <laughs> With a passion. He didn't want them to, he didn't want them to be saved. Then when they got saved, he got mad. <laughs> Fish don't swallow them up. He going the wrong way, running from God. Fish swallow them up, spit on the dry land. Then he get, he gets himself together. I read, I read that really going on there. And he gets on there and, and the king repent and everything happened all right. And everybody's all right. Now you know they got destroyed later. But they went back to doing what they were doing. But everything was all right. John was set up under the general tree. Man is fine. Still man. Just like some of y'all, some people done done things to you 20 years ago, and here they come up in the church out looking blessed and highly favored. Come stepping up with their shoulder back. Who they think they is? I remember them. You still man. God gonna send a worm. <laughs> he gonna eat up your covering. You don't believe it? Keep being mad. Keep missing your spirituality point here that Jesus is telling his disciples. You're going to be blessed even though you go through all of this stuff. You're going to be blessed. You are the salt of the earth. You, 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 gonna, you got to be right. Don't lose your spirituality. You have a covering over you. Don't stay stuck. Angry, mad, sad, unhappy. In life, for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Don't stay don't stay stuck there. Amen. And then it says, ye are the light of the world. Amen. So we got to be careful what we are, because everybody's looking at us, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? Our state of mind. Everybody looking at us. And then it's sin that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. And we're gonna end with that one right there. Because a lot of us be slipping and sliding. Can't hide. Can't hide. Somebody seeing us doing what we do. Huh? We think that nobody see us. You just don't know them yet. Amen. Yeah, you just don't know them yet, but somebody see you and the devil uses them to expose you. Even though you don't mind gonna stop whatever it is, you, you might have said something the other day and somebody around the corner heard you. It's new wife. You over there cuss. Then I come to church, praise God, bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Won't never say nothing to me, but they'll say something to y'all that said, you know, I see you all day. He ain't what he said he is. He's a hypocrite. <laughs> I don't ask the Lord to forgive me. Go on about my business. You, you still stuck on that. You stuck, and you ain't going nowhere because you were stuck on what you're seeing somebody else do. You can't move past what they just saw them do. And they don't, they don't go on the upper high, upper heights. God is really blessing them. And you still stuck on what they did. Something that nobody else knows about it, but you stuck. That's how the devil uses that to steal your joy. The devil uses that to cripple you spiritually. So, so that you won't be effective. See, he can't, he can't fool you. He can't separate you from God. But he tries to cripple you. So, because have you ever heard preachers preach? And you know they were running around out there? When they preach, they, I mean, they preach that church on fire. First thing come to your mind, hmm. <laughs> or you know they drink, or they know they do this, or do drugs, or whatever it is. You, you crippled off of what you've seen. Jesus wants you to get, bad, get past that. You're blessed. You got to get past that to be effective. 
I said it a million times. Well, not maybe, maybe not a million times, but I've said it enough times. None of the disciples was correct. <laughs> in the biblical days, they all would kill you in a minute. The priest, huh? They would kill you. But in our society, we done painted a, a falsehood. First, that you don't have to go through anything. Huh? God is just love. You don't let nothing happen to you. If something happened to you, then it's because you, you're an evil person. You just learned tonight that all kinds of things are going to happen to you. Yeah. That you're going to be uh, poor in spirit. That you're going to have people persecuting you. You're going to have people reviling you just for the sake of Jesus the Christ. People have painted that falsehood that God won't allow children to die, that God won't allow certain other folks to die. Look at all the preachers died when, when COVID came through here. And somebody saying, oh, they won't live in right. They won't live in right. They the one won't live in right. God will allow things when it's your time, it is your time. Yeah. And you can, you can make your time faster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as things you can do to make it faster because we don't know when our time is. Yeah. How long will God's mercy extend over your life? Yeah. How long will his grace hide over your life? How long will, it, will the blood of Jesus cover your life? How long? Uh -huh. Huh? Come with David slept with the sheep, sent a husband out to die, and he was killed. Think about this. David prayed. David was God's anointed man. He prayed about it. She was pregnant with his baby, and the baby died. Mm -hmm. The priest came and told him, said, the baby ain't gonna live. Huh? God's anointed. He was blessed in the Lord. But until he got it right with God, nothing would do right. Amen. And this is what Jesus is telling his disciples, and this is what I'm telling you tonight. You are blessed in the Lord. You are blessed and highly favored, but you got to get it right with God. You got to make sure that you hold. Go back home and read over this. Matthew 5. Read some more. Read the whole chapter. You got to make sure that you get it right with your Lord and Savior. Not for me, but for you. See, hard times is coming. Whether y'all realize it or not, whether y'all realize it on Facebook, YouTube, hard times is coming, and we got to get it ourselves uh, in the rightful relationship with God that we can bear these things that are coming towards us that we cannot see. So with that said, we're going to ask that you would take, uh, stand on your feet so at this time, and we're going to have our closing prayer. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for tonight. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. Because truly, Lord, we are blessed of you. We feel your anointing on tonight. We feel the blood of Jesus that covers us in our sins. Father, we know some hard times is coming. And we know at times that we don't do right, don't live right, don't talk right. We don't talk to you right. Father, we ask the Lord that you will forgive us, Lord. Help us along the way. Prepare us, Lord, for your coming. Father, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you cover these few, Lord, that have come and that are listening on Facebook, Facebook and YouTube. Father, we ask the Lord that you go into the hospital rooms and the convalescent homes right now, Lord. For those, Lord, that could not make it and, and, and can't come, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Father, we ask the Lord that you will forgive them, Lord, of their sins. And help them right now in the name of Jesus. Bless them in their physicalities, Lord. Bless them in their mindsets, Lord. Bless them in their spiritual minds, Lord. Continue, Lord, to seal them, Lord. Now, Father, as we get on the dangerous highway, we ask the Lord, as you brought us to your Savior, Lord, that you take us back. Amen. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen.
this now. 